Good morning, 10 o'clock. Bell has rung. Glad you're here. We're in the book again today. We're on the page number seven. Make me a little cake first. That's where we're at today, page seven. We've got a few books up here if anybody needs one. Need a book. We'll begin the word of prayer. No. Steve Morton, would you leave some prayer, please? focus this morning is on uh, Elijah and this widow, what she gave her faith in Elijah, at least what he had to say to her. Let's read uh, the, the event, 1 Kings 17, beginning in verse 9 through 16. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon. Now this is God telling Elijah what to do. Which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Seraphith, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar, and see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in, go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. A pretty familiar I think a, a text there that we're familiar with Elijah and the widow and what went on there. And the first question, hey, on number one there, what do you know of Elijah before this event? Well, we know that he was hated by Jezebel and Ahab, king and queen there. They hated by them too. Uh, she got after him. That's what's causing him to flee. She got after him. We know that he predicted this drought that came about, and sure enough, the drought happened. As we are going to read, he's fed by some ravens. Uh, he raises his widow's son eventually. He overthrows the prophets of Baal. He did this beforehand. That's when uh, he called down fire from heaven, and he destroyed the altar and everything there. And they were, and these prophets, 450 false prophets, were called in. And nothing happened to, to Baal. What's the big one about Elijah in the Old Testament? The big one. Did, did anybody attend his funeral of Elijah? <laughs> He's taken up in the whirlwind. He didn't die. That's a big one. 
And that's a, a lot about the uh, Old Testament. There's something big that also happened in the New Testament concerning Elijah. The transfiguration. When Christ went there, and there's Moses and Elijah appeared before uh, Peter, James, and John, and, and these three were having this conversation. That tells you something about Elijah, the, the great prophet that he was, for the Lord to put to bring him before with Moses and with Christ, put him up there to speak and talk. And he was a very popular prophet. Uh, a lot of the Jewish individuals, they, they, they thought Jesus was him and re reincarnated and a lot of things, but he was a, a very popular prophet, both the Old Testament and even in the New as they would recall about what he would do, what he did. Uh, John the Baptist, I think, was compared to it as well. Question number two, who first took care of Elijah in his exile? Well, that would be these ravens. Uh, they brought him bread to eat. And he was there by that creek or stream or whatever it was, body of water, a little bit of water, until it ran dry and then he had to depart, but the ravens were bringing him food and taking care of him. But God can do that. He can bring, make the birds even obey his will. They do. Birds can do it. They supply what, uh, what he needed to be what he needed. But you'll never, whenever an animal is used in the Bible where God uses an animal, you never hear that animal complaining. Uh, an animal doesn't does it start kicking and jumping around, anything like that? Animals obey the Lord in the right way. You think of some animals that did. Uh, you think of Balaam, the donkey, that spoke to uh, Balaam, the donkey there. We got the ravens here that fed him. I'm thinking of the, of the little uh, colt that Christ rode in on uh, during the, the last week when he went in on that, on that uh, last week of his life, went there, rolled in. That coat never been ridden before. And that coat didn't buck and snort and try to throw him off. He got on that coat and rolled right into, right into Jerusalem with him. And there's maybe some others where animals were used to, to carry out the will of God, but never did they ever complain about this. So the ravens were the first ones to take care of Elijah. Question three when Elijah first approached the widow of Seraphith, what was she doing? Uh, well, she was gathering a few sticks here to cook her last meal. She, this is the last little bit of oil she had and the flour that she had. And her future looked pretty bleak. Didn't look good. He knew this is it. Uh, so that's what she was doing. And 1 Kings 17 and verse 12, here's where this conversation has happened. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, a little oil in a jar, and see I'm gathering sticks, a couple of sticks, I may go in, prepare it for myself and my son, who may eat and die. This woman was a Gentile. Based on 1 Kings 17, 12, how do we know that she was a Gentile? How do we know that? Her words give her away. Look what she says. So she says, as the Lord your God lives. She did not say, as the Lord our God lives. The Lord your God. She knew about God. She knew about Jehovah. And she knew uh, that Elijah being a Jewish individual, and that's where she states uh, this here. So therefore, we see God taking care of this Gentile woman in the Old Testament. It wasn't just he only helped the Jews out, but he helped out all people. And here's this lady, a widow, and uh, the Lord's going to bless her with this flour and oil for as long as the drought lasts for her there. We don't know any more about her. We prove much know that she is poor. 
because she couldn't afford to, to go buy any more oil or, or flour, if there's any out there. Couldn't afford to buy that. But here she is gathering sticks, something probably her husband would do if he were alive. But she's gathering these sticks up and preparing this one final meal. So her future looks pretty bleak. Pretty bleak. Question four. What two requests did the prophet make of this widow? Well, he first wants a little bit of water. And apparently she had some. Again, a drought, no water, it might be hard to find. But yet she had some, she's going to go get him some water. And then he makes the request for a little bit of bread as well. Uh, she didn't think she had enough to share just between her and the son. But yet she's going to do this. She will give him the first portion of it. That's what his second request was. Some water, please. And then fix me a little bit of bread with what remaining items you have. Question five. Why did the widow hesitate to comply with Elijah's second request? Well, would you have applied to it? Would you have given him the first amount if it's just enough for you and your child? Would you have said, forget that. I'm going to feed my child first before I feed a stranger, somebody I have never laid eyes on before, I know nothing about. Would you have given in to this request and went in and fixed for him this bread first, carried it to him, and go back and fix for yourself and your son what you have left? Here's a lady with respect to, to Elijah, and she does this. So bread's all she has. You know, that might help us to better understand Matthew 6 and verse 11, where Christ in, this, in the model prayer there, where he says, give us this day our daily bread. Because this woman daily was her bread. And the next day, she didn't know where the bread was, the bread was going to come from. So maybe that help us understand a little bit how they were their thinking was daily bread that Christ said. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna die anyway. What way it's looking? We're gonna die. Question six. What had brought about this condition of poverty? On verse 1, we see 1 Kings 17, 1. Then Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there should not be dew or rain these years except at my word. No dew or rain. It's one thing not having rain. But deep, I mean, this is going to be a terrible, terrible drought that's going to come about. Uh, and the poverty was brought on because of this drought. How long did, did the drought last? Three and a half days? Multiple choice here. Three and a half days. Two years, three and a half years, four years, four choices. How long did it last? Three and a half years it lasted. That's a long time. We go three weeks and we start saying, boy, it sure is dry. Three and a half years. Things die. All plant life dies pretty much. People die. But three and a half years is a long time for this to happen. We see this in Luke 4, verse 25. Again, this is Christ speaking about this drought. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout the land. And of course, there would be a famine. And yet, whenever this happened, 
uh, 1 Kings 18 and verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain to, on the earth. So three years, in the third year is when it finally rained. It was three years and six months when it came about, from the time that Elijah told Ahab, the heavens are about to be shut up. That's a long time for no rain. And when the rain came, I said, I'm not going to tell you. If you don't know, read what Elijah did when the rain started, what he was doing. So a uh, good, good thing to read about what happened there when it came about. 1 Kings 18 would be where you would start to read that. Question 7. What caused the widow to comply with Elijah's request? For the last of her food. We well, made a promise to her. If you'll do this, well, then you'll have plenty of flour and oil thereafter. Now, she didn't know how this was going to happen. And she didn't even know if he was telling the truth. But she took it here, okay, a Jewish man. You serve a great God. She knew that much. She didn't know he was a prophet, not like he was. So she's going to step out there on faith and do as he says. And he may eat it and leave, never see it. But then again, he may do something here to cause us to flower and oil to, to continue forever, or not forever, at least until the drought was over. And maybe she was thinking, how can he do this? Is he going to physically go get it and bring it to me? She, I don't think she had any idea that the bins and the, and the oil jar would just continually have flour in, in oil in them. She didn't know how. But that's what faith is. When the Lord tells us he's going to do something, we just know he's going to do it and have faith that he will get it done. And sometimes we try to figure it out. Don't, don't worry about figuring it out. The Lord will provide it. Take care of it. Question 8. Relate a similar experience Jesus had in John uh, 6, 9-13. This is when Christ fed the 5,000. He took a little and he made a lot. The people were hungry. They had nothing to eat. And this uh, miracle will be further proof that God's in control. And again, we're familiar with how they, he fed the people 5,000 plus, had 12 baskets left over. So that's to be a, a similar experience there. The people had nothing about to starve to death. And Christ took care of them. Question 9. In what two ways was this generous widow rewarded by God? Well, first of all, the flour and oil was there. She, until this drought would pass, she had plenty to eat. And the second which was the greater, I would think, is when her son dies and Elijah brings him back to life, raises him from the dead. And you would think that this flour and oil, you get up every morning, there it is. Next morning, there it is. You take a cup out, you make a large batter, batch, batch with it, next morning, there it is. You would think, boy, that would be enough to to cause me to really believe that this man is from God and, and this is coming by means of God. But it didn't. It didn't really have that effect on her to say that God's involved with this. But when her son was raised from the dead, that's when she really became a believer. And that's uh, in, verse, in question 10 there. Which of these two miracles caused the widow to believe? 1 Kings 17, verse 23. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then a woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. So her son being raised 
caused her to say, this is a man of God. Not the oil, not the flower, but uh, this is a man of God. She's now a believer. And it's a very interesting story there, how Elijah raised him from the dead. Again, read that one. A lot of interest there. What did he do? What, what process did he go through to bring it back? Very good story. Uh, you'll find many in the, in the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, that even though they were believers, they didn't really say, okay, he is the son of God until they saw somebody raised from the dead. He would do miracles in front of them, and yeah, we believe him, but whenever he would raise somebody from the dead, that, that caused people to really focus in that this, 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 this guy's really different. Look at John 11, verse 45. This is when he raised Lazarus. Uh, then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. Well, they believed in him beforehand. But when they saw Lazarus come forth after four days of death, this, this is him. And this is the event as well uh, with Lazarus when the Jews said, we've got to kill him. We've got to kill him because of, uh, he's going to destroy the, our, our religion, they were thinking. In John 2.22, another event. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Well, they believed that he was different. They believed when he said, I'm the son of God. But when they saw him after the resurrection, that's when their faith was concrete. This man is who he says he is. So the, and you think of other times when Christ raised people from the dead in the scriptures, uh, you know their faith, was, their faith was really solid after that. Number 11, is there any assurance that God will still work in this manner today? Well, God's going to make sure that our, that our pantry is never empty. It may not be that our refrigerator is full or the freezer is full. Well, he's going to make sure that we have enough to survive on. He'll do that. And that's the assurance that we have from God to take care of our essentials. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 8. But I say, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. In verse 8 here, for, for God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you have always have an all-sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. God's going to supply, take care of us. And then Matthew 6, 25 and 26, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, it's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not a more value than they are? God takes care of the birds, and we're more valuable than the birds. You'll never see a, a bird with, with wrinkles because of worry. You'll never see a bird sitting on a power line somewhere thinking, oh, where's my next meal going to come from? I just don't know. Don't do it. God takes care of us. He's going to take care of us. Uh, but remember, if one will not work, neither shall he eat. Again, God expects us able-bodied people to do something, to do what we can. <clears throat> Question 12. For what purpose did Jesus mention this event to his generation uh, well, there are a lot of widows that were during the time of Christ and, uh, 
He, uh, he helped the widows out, certainly did. So uh, again, in Luke uh, 4, 16 through uh, 26 there, he mentions that. He brings that uh, across to them. Questions for a classroom discussion? Somewhere that I left my notes off on that one. We'll look at it. What excuses could she have offered for refusing the food request, this widow? She might have excuse. She might say, I don't have any. She could have said that she could have lied about it. You know, she had some. She could have said, I don't have any. Call him being a stranger. I don't have any. She could have said, I'm going to give it to my son. I'm not going to eat, 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 eat any of it myself. Uh, she could have offered all kinds of excuses here, but she, she didn't. She didn't do it. Uh, number two, why didn't Elijah produce the oil and meal before, before requesting bread? I think it was a test of her faith is what it was. Will she do what, as I say, to do? So she did, and she was rewarded because of her faith in that. And number three, how does this story help when our offering is, is dwarfed by need? Uh, that God's going to provide for us. And we may think, well, I've got to have this money right here for, for this. Again, God's going to provide for us. But sometimes we have a, a lack of faith in, in this and in what God can do and how he will do it. God wants us to be cheerful givers, enjoy what we give. And, uh, and this lady here, as we, as we see, she was blessed by putting her faith in what Elijah said. Anything on this uh, on the lesson here? Make me a little cake first. All right. Continue next week on the next lesson. So we'll take up take up there.